Hello, Micah and Trinity. Thank you so much for being on the show. We're really excited to get to know you both as creatives, and we're so glad to get to know your two books, All There Is to Know and It Can Be Scary. Uh, welcome to the Musty Creative Podcast. How are you doing today? So good. Oh, Thank you for having yeah. us. Awesome. So good to have you here. Uh, so let's get right into it. First question, what is your origin story? The origin story of Micah and Trinity. Uh, it's a fun one. Yeah. Uh, there's kind of two. Because mm-hmm. like whenever we first met uh, was our freshman year of high school. So we went to high school together. Um, oh, cool. Mm-hmm. But I wasn't friends with her um, mm-hmm. my freshman year, mm-hmm. and I was kind of making fun of the fact that everybody on, like, Dress What You Want to Be When You Grow Up Day, that uh, everybody that wanted to be a teacher put their hair up in a bun and put a pencil in it. <laughs> and I was trying to prove... I was like, I've never in my life seen a, a teacher with their hair in a bun and a pencil in it, but for some reason that's what everyone's doing. And I was trying to prove that that theory was correct to my friends. And Ooh. I saw Micah with her hair in a bun and a green colored pencil <laughs> on her hair. And uh, I was like, see, I'm going to go ask her what she's dressed as. She's going to say teacher. And I went up to her and I was like, hey, what are you dressed as? And she was like, I was like, are you a, are you a teacher? And she was like, actually, I'm a writer. <laughs> and so this is the first thing I ever said to her. <laughs> and I was, yeah. like, I was just upset because she had disproved my point and I was like okay fine <laughs> talk to her for another year after that yeah <laughs> but then sophomore year That's... we had a class together mm-hmm. okay what, what class was that it was bible literacy okay oh, and nice, we were nice. like taking it from like a it was very piece of literature point of view yeah right. it wasn't like religious mm-hmm. class um but we had that mm-hmm. class together and then mm-hmm. We just kind of ended up sitting at the same table, mm-hmm. and uh, one day, apparently, I was just like listening to music and yeah. dancing. She like came in listening <laughs> to headphones and like dancing to music that no one else could hear, and I just loved that. And I saw her doing that, and I was like, "Oh, we're gonna be friends. We're gonna." I just nice. <laughs> and so, so was there like a, a like a recap of like, "Hey, you asked me that question on dress." Not like, like much later. Day. Like maybe yeah. three years later. Yeah. I was like oh, wow. looking yeah. through her Instagram and <laughs> seeing that years ago that she had that pencil in her hair. I was like, you were that girl? <laughs> oh, so you didn't even make the connection. Yeah. Oh boy. Oh, that's cool. That's a great that's a great story. Yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> it's fun now. And I, I love oh sorry. We make books together mm-hmm. and the first yeah. thing she said to me was that she was a writer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we didn't yeah. think to make books <laughs> together until so long later. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it was like a, an Instagram post or something that you both saw, and you're like, let's all, you know, obviously we can make a book together. Yes. Yeah. We, uh, we saw this post of this girl. She had decided she was going to make a, uh, a children's book, and she was like an mm-hmm. illustrator. Mm-hmm. And she decided that she was going to. She was like, today I'm deciding on making a children's book. And she started with the dimensions of the book, like the size of the book. And we're talking about how weird that is for that to be the first thing you think about making your book. Like, you're going to be like, what's the book going to be about? Yeah. Yeah. What sort of story you want to tell? What genre? Is it poetry? (laughs) How big is it going to be? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, And so we were laughing about that. Mm -hmm. And then we were like, oh, wait, we should make a book. Because she's always making <laughs> art, and I'm always writing poems. And here we are yeah. having these ideas about making a book. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I so. really appreciate that about your story, is that you just... It wasn't like somebody was, like, asking you to do it or anything. You just, mm-hmm. like, had this desire to create, and you went mm-hmm. out and did it. That's really awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're mm-hmm. creators, just... Yeah. Even yeah. before we were doing that, we were... I was making a lot of art. Mm-hmm. She's She writes... All the time. <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit about your first book, All There Is to Know? What prompted that specifically? We, uh, sorry, I'm like talking over yeah, you so good. much. We uh, had a lot of like ideas that we, uh, that we had like learned mm-hmm. more recently. Mostly in like our first two years of college, we 
Mm. just like learned so many things and like changed our mind on so many things Um, Mm. because we met so many people mm -hmm. that were outside of the bubble of our uh, fairly small town in Texas Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and seeing so many like different points of view on life Mm -hmm. we have really like learned a lot and also thinking like a lot of these things we should have learned when we were younger yeah Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. and Mm -hmm. uh so we just started with that kind of general concept, mm-hmm. uh, pointing out, like, we made a list of things that we wanted mm-hmm. to talk about. We wanted mm-hmm. to talk about, um, we want to talk about, like, gender being colors and how that's really weird. And, like, having emotions, like, even negative emotions is okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so we, like, made a list mm-hmm. of things like that, and mm-hmm. um, then we... In collaborating on that list, she would make the poem, and then I would make the illustration, mm-hmm. and uh, then we would put that together. It was a really collaborative process. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I think that's really cool. And, you know, a poetry book, you know, and all there is to know, um, you have a number of poems, but you also have the art aspect of it, too. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we come from more of, like, traditional narrative, like, the, the character starts from here, and then you go all the way to the end, and mm-hmm. there's, like, a three-act structure. But with a poetry book, you're telling, like, multiple different stories that don't have to connect, Mm -hmm. you know, kind of, I'm being a weird Marvel nerd, but, like, an (laughs) MCU of your own poetry world, in a way. Yeah. Um, So tell, how how is that different in, like, bringing, putting that book together? And then, Trinity, you have to create art pieces, like, different art pieces that, again, may not connect to the previous poem, but you have to, like, reintroduce the reader into a new world. Um, I honestly think it's a lot simpler than writing a, like, drawn-out story because you don't have to have all the pressure of, like, keeping everything, like, developing one character throughout a story or, like, making sure Mm -hmm. everything lines up Um, because it's just, you know, the poem is less than a page. Um, But it also allows you to, like, give a voice to so many different, like, points of view. And so, like, if your readers are, like, reading a poem, they're like, oh, I don't really relate to that, then they can, like, read the next one and be like, oh, no, this one really speaks to me. Um, Mm. So I really enjoy that. It's, like, a broad way of reaching a lot of people. And Mm -hmm. also the, like, order that they were put in... um, Mm -hmm even though they might not like connect. So we have one poem, uh, All There Is To Know, Mm -hmm. in the book, All There Is To Know, Mm -hmm. that talks about um, things that you wish you had learned and Mm -hmm. how sometimes in history, uh, you don't hear the like true stories or the whole story of something. Mm -hmm. And then the next Mm. poem, you turn the page, is about uh, Catherine Wright, the uh, Wright brother's sister, who was such a huge part of Mm -hmm their whole story and their success and so putting those right next to each other kind of tells more or like more story than if Mm -hmm. they were more separate Mm -hmm. yeah they and like they build on each other and kind of prepare the reader for like the next thing to come so Mm -hmm. that they're kind of more like ready emotionally for the next story so Mm -hmm. that's that's actually a really good point because all there is no tells this kind of foundational truth of like, you need to learn more and, and you know, not everything that you've been told is the way it should be, that, you know, mm-hmm. that kind of, or it is. Mm-hmm. But then you tell the story about Catherine next. That, that could be really powerful. So mm-hmm. it, it's not connected, connected, like character wise, yeah. but it's mm-hmm. definitely connected as far as the themes. It almost feels like a, like a storytelling album, almost in a way. Yeah. 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 Like in a musical album, you're, you're being taken on this journey mm-hmm. if you listen to the whole album. Mm-hmm. Um, and that you know felt yeah kind of feel mm-hmm. the same way in reading in reading your books yeah and i actually really enjoyed cuz i actually did not know catherine wright existed <laughs> before yeah. i read that book yeah. i was like is this like a real story i've never heard this at all and so mm-hmm. i was just wondering if you could go more into that story um, cuz i really like how you sort of give this profile of women that have not really been talked about much, but mm-hmm. they've actually contributed a lot to society in some way, so. Mm-hmm. You wanna talk about Catherine? Yeah, so, 
Uh, yeah, so yeah, I don't know if you guys know about the show Drunk History, but... Yes, I yeah, do. She, she <laughs> introduced that to me a long time ago. Uh, we watched some episodes mm-hmm. here and there, and there was an episode mm-hmm. uh, that talked a little bit about Catherine, mm-hmm. and that was what okay. sparked our interest in her, mm-hmm. and then we did more research. Yeah, I... Mm-hmm. Yeah, just remember, like, sitting down and just, like doing all the research I could on her, finding, and just, it's out there, you know, like, she wasn't erased, she's just not talked about, and just, like, writing down all of the, like, plot points of her life, and, like, words that I liked, and then just turning that into a poem, but yeah, we are so just inspired by how, how foundational she was to helping her brothers, and she yeah, ran she, the like, money mm-hmm. for uh, their, mm-hmm. like, family shop to mm-hmm. fund their, uh, not only, like, the, like, supplies that they would get, mm-hmm. but, like, traveling. Oh, and wow. when they went to places uh, that weren't English-speaking, like, I she think would, Germany. They went to France. Oh, like, France. Yeah. And so she learned French so she could, like, mm-hmm. translate for them. Yeah, and, like, read books mm-hmm. on aviation from these mm-hmm. other, com- oh, yeah, like, yeah. countries, and then teach her brothers that. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. she, without Catherine Wright, the Wright brothers probably would have been extremely unsuccessful in mm-hmm. making the first plane there in Kitty Hawk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, she did exist, and she was so mm-hmm. integral to that, but, you know, we always it's think always about... the Wright brothers. Yeah, not yeah. the Wright siblings. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. That's mm-hmm. That's completely true, like... I don't remember anyone ever mentioning them, and I always thought that they were just exclusively just two brothers. Like yeah. In, yeah. The, in the poem here in Catherine, it says, in Europe, the boy stumbled, confined only to English, so Catherine led conversations after teaching herself French. Mm-hmm. She won the social scene, an outgoing charmer, and was one of the few women awarded the Legion of Honor. That, that's kind of dope. You got a little, mm-hmm. oh, I'm not, it's not rap, but it's, that's kind yeah. of like, that's so cool. I like that. But uh, that, that's awesome. Like Again, uh, there's so much that goes into it, I think of, immediately I think of, because I work in the tech industry, I think of Jeff Bezos. He recently divorced mm-hmm. his wife, but people don't know that she was there before he started Amazon mm-hmm. and actually was helping to, like, she was working while he was, like, and funding the startup at the beginning while he worked in the garage when mm-hmm. they moved out to uh, the Seattle, Washington area. So, again, it's like mm-hmm. people quickly forget about the women um, that go along in the, these, these stories that, you know, men are proclaimed as usually the heroes but people forget about the women that have that play a major part in the in these stories as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm glad that we were yeah, able we're trying to, to put that out there in the world. Yeah, it's great whenever we talk yeah. to people that have read it and mm-hmm. like even like people at the post office that we go to to mail our books mm-hmm. out and be like, oh, Ooh. I read I read Catherine. I had no mm-hmm. idea about that, and then I looked mm-hmm. it up, and it's true. And, yeah. and so mm-hmm. it's nice to have people looking up Catherine Wright. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, definitely. Yeah, it's really awesome. I think it's it's cool because that it's kind of like the same theme as some of your other poems about this woman that she was like book smart, but she also like fell in love and she had like mm-hmm. this idea of like this romantic life. So it's like women are not something you can like categorize because mm-hmm. there's so many elements to who women are in general. And yeah. um it's not like a stereotypical woman. It's like she was an entrepreneur. She fell in love. Mm-hmm. She made her own way in the world. Mm-hmm. And um, it's just, it's really awesome that you're highlighting those types of stories. So thank you yeah. so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I just wanted to go back to all there is to know for a quick second. Um, if you could talk about this line, it says, but out in the world, I saw different points of view. And I said to myself, not everyone thinks like you. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's, that can be difficult for a lot of people, I think, in our country yeah. <laughs> to realize that. Uh, can you talk about you know, why that line is important and, and needed to be set? Yeah, I think specifically for me, I grew up, you know, in Wiley, Texas with this like very specific world view and then immediately was in a theater department of like a liberal arts college Um, Mm -hmm. and just everyone's like thoughts on everything was just so different from how I had been raised and I 
it was kind of terrifying at first. I was like, oh no, I'm not like any of these people. But then I just like started learning more and more about it. And I was like, actually, I agree with them. Um, Mm. And so that was really important for me to just be able to change my mind and know that changing my mind was a good thing. And people are, I feel like, so scared to change their mind because they attach their identity so much to all these things. But like, we were people life is long you can change yeah and it's yeah, actually a really true. cool thing to be able to mm-hmm. we uh we even had a teacher in high school who uh he was f- from out of town not from wiley <laughs> yeah. and he told us that he was a feminist and mm. uh this is when we were both in high school and i remember we were both like why would you call yourself <laughs> that it's kind of like that's like a bad word why yeah. would you why would you mm-hmm. want people to know that? Mm-hmm. Um, and then he kind of was like, uh, you know, the ideas and things that have been associated with feminism uh, aren't as aren't as true as you know the actual meaning, and mm-hmm. it's really just about mm-hmm. uh, equality between the genders, mm-hmm. and it's yeah. nothing nothing more or less than that. And that was just something I didn't know because I yeah. was just raised to think that those people were all bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, that, that's a very good point. That's a very good point. I think, mm-hmm. like, looking back at people like Susan B. Anthony, obviously, and, like, all the work she did, mm-hmm. it, you know, people tend to look only at now the, the modern-day view and not look at the whole history of everything. But yeah. that's a really good point. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about your, your following book of poems. You had... Um, all there is to know, and then you followed it up with "It Can Be Scary," mm-hmm. which actually is a really good title. Um, Thank you. Because it can, it, it, it can be scary, um, <laughs> yeah. and even though it, 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 it is a Halloween themed book, but I think it, it there's so much more to it than mm-hmm. than just that. Mm-hmm. But um, but I do want to ask a question: Why why Halloween as a theme? So it started. Do you all know what Inktober is? I it's. On Twitter, I see artists drawing yeah. images and posting about it. I think that's it. Yeah, it's like a right. like a trend in the every art year, community. Every yeah. yeah, every October, like people will make lists of like usually thirty one things so you could, to draw like every day. It's like a prompt. Yeah, yeah. and um, nice. last October I was doing one of those, um, mm-hmm. and it wasn't even the full 31 because I knew I wasn't going to commit to that. So it was like a every three days do a drawing thing. Mm -hmm. And um, every time that I illustrated something and I drew it and I posted it, Micah got really jealous. Yeah. Because we had just made made all there is to know. And it was so much fun to be, like, creating. And then we, like sent all the books out and it was over and she was still making art and I was like that's not fair I'm not making art anymore and so I would write poems based on the inktober drawings that she did oh okay and and then she realized that they all kind of had a similar theme of like what starts out being the scary thing isn't actually scary and I was writing poems I didn't even realize I was doing that and we were like, we're doing That's so many awesome. of these. It's like it's turning into another book. Yeah, we did like yeah. of them following the ink, the like Inktober mm-hmm. prompt list, where it was like, mm-hmm. you know, the word light, and I was like, mm-hmm. okay, I'm gonna draw a like spaceship with a big light coming down onto a house, mm-hmm. and yeah, then she yeah. wrote a poem about that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then after like four of them going in, it was like, okay, let's forget this prompt list <laughs> and uh, mm-hmm. continue wow. to follow the theme that she was accidentally Mm -hmm. creating while writing the first four Mm -hmm. um which is basically just that like there were like six but two of them didn't end up in the book yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. um and Mm -hmm. it the same theme of like the thing that you would expect to be scary isn't actually the bad guy Mm -hmm. um really was the inspiration for um the book as a whole yeah Yeah. and but in a a digestible way of like halloween and spooky Mm -hmm. scary yeah Mm -hmm. And That's monsters. True. <laughs> yeah, I think like Halloween is like an easy way to kind of bring people into a story. A lot mm-hmm. of people like like it, and it doesn't come with usually too much uh, attached to it. Mm-hmm. You know, um, unless unless it's you know certain parts 
of, mm -hmm. of, of certain parts of society. I'll just leave it at that. But, <laughs> uh, but it, it doesn't usually, and, and it's usually fun and, and, and peaceful and stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I kind of want to look at the, this first image that you have here is an image of like uh, of a shoe, someone mm -hmm. hiking, and you have like the leaves and, and uh, the sticks kind of uh, crunching and crumbling under. Uh, can you kind of take us through your process of like how that came to be in, in the book, Trinity? Yes, so I, uh, that was one of them that was inspired by the prompt list, and the prompt was sound. And I was thinking Ooh. about what's, what's the scariest sound? And mm. it wasn't really something that came to mind of like a sound that like maybe a wolf howling or something that might attack me. But if I were trying to hide and I accidentally made a sound, that would be very scary for me. Mm -hmm. And so I uh, first went, you know, my process is normally I go in with pencil and I kind of like plan out where everything's going to be. And then I go in with watercolor and uh, then I do little blobs around there. But I wanted it to feel it's got these like dimmer tones to it and I wanted it to feel like it was night and it was spooky and it was fall and um, such a like close uh, such a close up of this foot stepping on the stick which is such a like uh, trope in so many spooky <laughs> movies it's That's like true. you're backing up and oh no I stepped in a stick and it made a sound and now they know where I am I have to right. run mm -hmm. and I think that's something that uh is used so much. It's in Harry Potter, yeah. I think, like, twice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so I think it's something that people are familiar with, and it can uh, evoke that same thought in their minds of, like, mm -hmm. uh-oh, time to run. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It has a little bit of a Quiet Place vibe to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true. That's true. Definitely. And I, I, I wish we could all just learn to avoid the sticks. Yeah, because <laughs> that is super when you're scary. Walking. Yeah, yeah, yes. just, a little, a little, just a little more. <laughs> uh, but that, that's actually really cool. So then, it, it, your your first poem is "Friend or Foe," and mm -hmm. we'll definitely get to it. But I love kind of like the way you come back to it at the end, and we'll definitely mm -hmm. talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, but it, again, "Friend or Foe," the the whole idea of just being scared, but you mm -hmm. you kind of like. Well, I guess what I'm trying to say is it. it it makes you think about autumn. You're thinking about seeing Bigfoot and things like mm -hmm. that. But you're also you kind of highlight the idea of like like a very scary person. Mm -hmm. And then to me, it kind of takes like a different turn with the poem. I don't want to I don't want to spoil it. I want people to read it. So yeah. can you kind of take us into like more of that theme of you know what was what was really behind that poem? Because a lot of people again associate Halloween with the, the spooky monster stuff, and, and that's that's mm -hmm. there, but. You're, you're kind of highlighting being scared of like a person or people. What, mm -hmm. what was was that about? Um, so the first and the last poems are actually the ones that are written the most from my actual point of view. Um, mm. Because I love taking walks. Um, but the sun just goes down so much earlier in the fall and winter. Um, True. So you got to be careful what time you go on a walk. Um, yeah. And I, I also just like... I like to be scared in terms of like going on a walk. And so that was like a like real scary emotion that I was like tapping into. Um and it's true, it's really it's really scary. I we like went to a graveyard once. Yeah, I was just gonna talk about and that. And <laughs> we like got there and it was like early but it was like already dark she was like let's go to a graveyard it'll be fun and spooky and i was like yeah i'm not scared of ghosts we can go to yeah. a graveyard it's gonna be fine right. right but it's like there's not street lamps in graveyards yeah like if there's somebody here as much as i'd love for ghosts to be what i'm scared of right now mm -hmm. if there's someone here that has not the best intentions like mm. we're not that physically strong. Yeah, no. We can't really defend ourselves. And I wouldn't girls. be able to see them if they were 20 feet away because of mm -hmm. how dark it is mm -hmm. and there's no light right. here. Yeah, so we just left. Yeah. 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 Just, and it's like, I'd love to have a spooky yeah. ghost experience, but instead I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm scared and four foot 11 yeah. experience. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, 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 that's what, I mean, even for me, like, as, as I'm like five foot 10, 200 and something pounds, but even for me, I'm just like, uh, <laughs> yeah. you, I kind I wish I could live in a. It, it made me think of wishing to live in a world or a society where you could go outside, 
and not, and not worry yeah. for your safety. Yeah. Yeah. You know, or for anyone else's safety. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, the next poem I want to highlight to here was thicker than blood. And again, I won't I won't read any the comments, uh, reading the lines because again I want people to read it. But I thought it was like again an interesting dichotomy of like you know uh, fleeing and running from kind of like persecution, mm -hmm. and then with with the with the image it, it kind of gives it a way of like um, a black woman with a uh, like a I'm assuming a vampire woman yeah. running and fleeing. Right. And uh, again, with 2020 and everything that was going on, but I just I, I really personally um, em empathize and really love this this poem and the art mm -hmm. and the idea there. Um, would Thank love to get you. your, your thoughts on that. Yeah, I had such a hard time writing this poem because it was one of the last ones. And we were like, we really need another friendly poem in the book. Um, and I just couldn't figure out how to write a friendly poem about a vampire because they drink blood. Yeah. Um. <laughs> and we're and we're trying to you know make the bad guys that normally the bad guys mm -hmm. seem like good guys, uh, but mm -hmm. they're killing people drinking blood. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I yeah I had this whole like list of words related to vampires like silver cross, uh, bite, count. And I just like found a bunch of like idioms to go or like sayings to go along with those. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, what are what are where are the points that like a vampire human friendship would be mutually beneficial? You know, like what are the mm. things vampires can't do? See themselves in mirrors, go into buildings mm -hmm. without being invited. What are things mm. humans can't do? I don't know, fly. And just like <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, like, make a friendship out of that and give them a, a common place of coming from like the vampire is shunned because they're a vampire, they're a scary monster, you know, and then they have mm -hmm. a friend who is also shunned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I actually really like this as like the intro or maybe the 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 con the the, the center of like a full on novel. Um, yeah. I know that there's the Twilight novels, but I, actually, I, I would find this even more compelling personally. So, mm -hmm. if you have, if, if you ever have an idea for writing a novel or a book series or something, I would love this as a concept personally. I thought it was really cool. Thank you, yes. thank you. No, you're most welcome. And then, um, I sorry, I just, there's, we, I'm not gonna go through every single little poem, but I, I do have my favorites. Uh, Interstellar Bandits. I thought that was interesting mm -hmm. as yeah, well. Yeah, it's one of my favorites yeah. too. <laughs> Yeah, and then yeah, you you have the like the UFO kind of shining mm -hmm. the beam down, and I think that that was from Inktober, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm I'm really into sci-fi and just mm -hmm. science in general. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm taking a lot of astronomy classes and just I'm really into science, and so mm -hmm. uh, I was really glad I was able to bring like a UFO in here and mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. into this spooky book. Mm -hmm. um, but also I wanted it to be scary and so I I was really happy with the way the illustration turned out for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no that's awesome. And I think not enough people add the aliens part cuz it, it it can be very scary actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It can be scary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. I that whenever I was writing it I just I don't really like scary stories or like <laughs> scary movies or anything. And so I was writing it and I was like, I don't want this kid to like get got. I want them to go on the adventure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that the ending was kind of making me laugh because it's like the person just accepted it at the end. Like, yeah, okay, yeah. let's just go. <laughs> let's make the so most of the situation. So many people <laughs> spend their whole lives trying to go to space and this kid got to go for free. <laughs> I know. <Yeah. laughs> It actually reminds me, uh, Michelle actually wrote a short story recently. Oh, I did. It was about, of an alien abduction. Yeah. Oh, Cute. So it was really similar to yeah. that. Yeah. And there's like a, there's a, there was a kid. And, yeah. Yeah. Wow. And then you also have a poem uh, named Elizabeth, and I'll, I'll let you tell that story. Mm -hmm. um, but again, really cool, and I, I didn't know this, so it's kind of like mm -hmm. learning, like reading interesting poetry, good poetry, mm -hmm. and also like learning a fun fact about history. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A little fun fact about this poem is that it's similar to Catherine and All There Is To Know in, like, the storyline because the poem before it is also about educating yourself. It's the little zombie, and she doesn't want to eat brains, so she's just going <laughs> to read some books. And, like, yeah. 
Um, and then we have a little a little thing to learn about. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, similar to Catherine, we learned about Elizabeth through drunk history. Mm-hmm. Nice. Oh, there you go. And then, of course, we're we're not taking all of our information from no. the drunk people on drunk. <laughs> and we research more and mm-hmm. figure out the true story. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, but basically, she was a uh, she was the she was an immigrant from Switzerland, and she was oh. orphaned at thirteen years old. And she loved flowers. She loved flowers. She founded the Garden Club in Hiawatha, Kansas, and would, you know, make regular complaints about like the treatment of the gardens and the greenhouses in the town. And every October 31st on All Hallows Eve, her flowers would just get destroyed by, you know, the kids in the town who were just going around destroying everything. Because back then, All Hallows' Eve, that, like, day, October mm-hmm. 31st, was very, like, let's burn everything down, mm-hmm. and oh. uh, it wasn't, it wasn't, it was the young people just mm-hmm. using it as an excuse to, like, basically terrorize everybody. And so yeah. Her, yeah. her garden that she was so proud of would get absolutely ruined. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, wow. And so she decided... Instead of, like, I'm going to, you know, try to seek retribution for these kids, her her solution was, I'm going to throw such a party on mm-hmm. Halloween that they won't have the energy in them to destroy my flowers or anybody else's things. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, yeah, she, she ended up throwing this, like, crazy party where uh, everybody dressed up and... Mm-hmm. And all of the youth was invited, and they ate candy. They had, like, a bit of a parade mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. where they, like, marched all Walked around town. Streets, yeah. And they were like, this is so fun. And she was like, yeah, you're wasting all your energy going all the way around this town. <laughs> and it worked. And everybody was like, mm. Elizabeth Krebs, my my garden is fine. My house windows aren't broken. Mm-hmm. Uh, how about we do this every year? And then that idea of just like let's make it a party where everybody's enjoying themselves in a way that isn't destruction um let's make that the new norm for october 31st Mm -hmm. and that's kind of how we got halloween the way that it is today where people dress up and they go through the streets and get candy yeah 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 no that's Oh, that's really cool information. I really honestly mm. did not know like, yeah, I think, any of that. I think it was cool how, like, instead of, like, fighting fire with fire, like, yeah. just, like, yeah. punishing the kids, she showed them love in a way. Like, she was yeah. Yeah. How creating... How cool woman. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Very, very cool. I, mm-hmm. And I, I like the idea, like, it, it's it's a loving way, but it's a, it's a solution-based way of, of, of to a problem. Like she yeah. doesn't want her flowers to be destroyed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's find a solution that brings everybody together. I, I think that's mm-hmm. wonderful. So yeah, she really is the crazy. the mother of Halloween. And mm-hmm. we were mm-hmm. uh, fortunate enough to uh, travel mm-hmm. to Hiawatha, Kansas mm-hmm. and uh, go see her grave. Mm-hmm. And uh, nice. before we put the book out, we actually like read this poem there mm-hmm. and yeah. uh, mm-hmm. I left a little uh, Halloween friendship bracelet at the grave. And, <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it's That's interesting cool. uh, how important uh, this person is to such a huge holiday uh, mm-hmm. and the way True. that we celebrate it. Right. And uh, just like nobody, nobody really knows. knows her. her grave's yeah. like not Ooh. special at all. There's mm-hmm. nothing else there. Um, but yeah, it was cool to like mm-hmm. pay some respects. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And again, another another woman in history who has been forgotten. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is, yeah. Is, is, yeah. It's crazy. There's like so much so much unwritten or so much untold history. Mm-hmm. It, it yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We could make so many books of poems yeah. about <laughs> the women who have not had their stories told. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so then the book closes with larger than life, and you you Trini, you draw your version of. Uh, I'm forgetting the name of the monster now. Bigfoot, right? Bigfoot. Bigfoot. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm looking at this version. Uh, he looks a little scary to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's, there's no, there's no mouth, <laughs> but obviously he's 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 friendly and yeah. he cares about you. And like we were looking up the like uh, reports of people who think that they've seen Bigfoot, and uh, mm-hmm. they have said that he has these like 
eyes that like glow so that's why mm-hmm. his oh. eyes look like that and uh yeah i showed it to my niece who's five years old and she was not a fan of him either she was like i don't like his eyes he's scary <laughs> oh. <laughs> um but yeah i wanted to use the same colors from the first poem uh to kind of indicate like this is a continuation of that first mm-hmm. poem mm-hmm. Um, yeah which in a lot of ways is like subtly or not so subtly uh, shown that this is the same person continuing their walk that mm-hmm. the book started with. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's interesting again that, uh, you know, the last poem's about Bigfoot and the first illustration is of her foot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. See, that's those, those linkings. Yeah, I did not get that one. I got, I got pretty much all the other ones you mentioned, but yeah, I didn't get that one. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Mm-hmm. It's so deep. Like, if you just think about it for long enough, you could, like, find all these little connections like that. There's so but I think it, it's, yeah, I think it's really cool. Um, just the, it's like a, the running theme throughout, like you were saying, of how mm-hmm. things that we're often afraid of aren't really something to be afraid of. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's, it's really cool when you're interacting with other people and you're, Cause like for me, I'm a very fearful person in general. Like I just get scared a lot, and so I think it's it's something to keep in mind that the thing you're scared of doing or saying or the the people you're scared of interacting with, it's not going to be as bad as you think it's going to be. Yeah. And yeah. There isn't anything to be afraid of unless like something obvious happens. But like you kind of like build the story of fear in your head before you even. Um, do the thing you're going to do and then it actually affects the way that you do it or it prevents you from doing those things so it actually keeps you in a bubble and it keeps you from experiencing life to the fullest because you're not allowing yourself to overcome the fear and just do the thing you know definitely yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. it was uh it was one like big uh theme throughout this book that we wanted to touch on is like a lot of the things that you a lot of things we think are scary, we think are scary because we aren't familiar with it or we don't, like, mm-hmm. fully understand it. And um, instead of, like, attacking that or, you know, acting on that fear in a way that it could be dangerous or harmful, um, if you actually do that, then you're kind of the scary one, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So that kind of question was another thing that we wanted to be a part of this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because fear can lead to, like, prejudice and discrimination and mm-hmm. war and battling and stuff. Yeah. So it's, like, mm-hmm. it's interesting how it, it goes the opposite direction. Like, you become the thing you're most afraid of. So mm. mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Interesting. I also hear a Yoda quote in there as well. Uh, fear leads to hate. Fear leads to the dark side. But sorry. That's yeah. Nerd. Uh, nerd. Love Star Wars. <laughs> yes. Yeah, same. Um, so as far as the, the creation of, the, of your of this book, uh, It Can Be Scary, is concerned. Can you explain the step-by-step process of how the book was published and, and marketed? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we uh, were able to, you know, be uh, physically with each other this time. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, we made this document, like a Google Doc, that mm-hmm. we were putting everything into. And mm-hmm. um, you. this one was uh, special in that a lot of it started with the illustration and then went uh, to the poem afterwards. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then editing uh, is so yeah. important. Yeah. If you just put mm-hmm. your first draft out there, uh, your book's not going to be no. the same as it could be, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. Um, and there are a lot of illustrations that I did that got just completely trashed and thrown mm-hmm. away. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was like, no, this isn't. Maybe this is good, but it's not. Even, it's it doesn't fit the world that we're building here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think getting yeah. a feel for that was also an important part of the process. Like what mm-hmm. belongs in this specific world? Because mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. like you were saying with like uh, the MCU, you know, like we're creating our own little universe mm-hmm. here, mm-hmm. and yeah. we're telling a bunch of stories that are happening within that, um, as opposed to like one big story. But making sure that that's all in its own cohesive world. Mm-hmm. Um, was important to mm-hmm. me specifically with the illustrations and the visuals of it. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, like one thing I appreciate from my illustration standpoint, it it's not like violent or gory. 
Um, yeah. Well, you know, and I, I would think that's not something you really wanted to put into this universe. Yeah. Some. Definitely. The, one of the, uh, I think it was a zombie that I illustrated, was just too scary. Mm-hmm. Kind of gross. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't yeah. actually want body parts falling off of this thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we had the doc, and then my sister formatted it a couple of times because we had to figure out the page sizes that would yeah. work with a hardcover book because we had the dream of making a hardcover, which is why we chose to go through Barnes & Noble. Because um, oh, okay. Amazon doesn't Amazon offer doesn't that. Do it. Yeah. Mm. yeah, just paperback, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Formatting is the worst part. It's the worst. By the way. Oh, really? <laughs> it's, really? Yeah, it's oh. just it's so tedious, and then it it makes me so anxious. You accidentally drag uh, one of the images into the header, and then that image is on every page. And, and oh, no. <laughs> um, so glad I don't have to do yeah, it. Thank so, you. Yeah, we're so glad to her sister, mm-hmm. uh, Marison, for mm-hmm. doing that for us. Mm-hmm. And then we just yeah, sent that cause... manuscript in to Barnes & Noble, mm-hmm. and they denied it a couple times, and we fixed what was wrong with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they don't mm-hmm. deny it for, like, content-based things, just mm-hmm. like, your cover isn't the right size. Yeah. If yeah. we print this mm-hmm. now, it's going to look terrible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and just ordering copies and waiting for yeah. them to arrive. Mm-hmm. And then from the marketing standpoint, it seems like you're very active on, on the Instagram. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so is that just some, like, you know, posting videos of yourselves, telling your your fans, your your audience, your community about the book? Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, you're reaching out to, to people like us. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, and, and just getting your name out there. Is there in, any other... Um, you know, steps to that marketing process? Do you have like a newsletter or, or anything like that? Um, we don't have a newsletter. Uh, for most of our like pre the book being released marketing, um, it was just like Instagram. Mm-hmm. I had a really fun time making flyers and printing those out mm-hmm. and putting those up at places that would allow mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Um, nice. I don't, I don't think it was necessarily successful. I don't it's hard to know Mm -hmm. if anybody actually bought it because they saw the flyer um yeah Mm -hmm. but uh it was was fun nonetheless Mm -hmm. uh and after the book being out most of our marketing is uh we're gonna be going to like pumpkin patches Mm -hmm. and uh like trunk or treat like fall festivals there's like a Mm -hmm. corn festival nearby Mm -hmm. coming up Mm -hmm. nice and uh going there and talking about our book and uh reading some poems and doing live illustrations yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that'll be fun and just like Mm -hmm. a way to get uh the eyes of like i guess our target audience of people that like fall um Mm -hmm. get their Mm -hmm. eyes on to the fact that our book exists Mm -hmm. because that's the hardest Mm -hmm. part right now is just nobody really knows that it exists Mm -hmm. it feels like yeah so we're also mm-hmm. planning on doing uh, Instagram ads, mm-hmm. so oh, okay. wow. getting the ads put up there. Mm-hmm. But oh, very cool. And reading in elementary schools. Oh yeah. Or, yeah, I was just mm-hmm. I was gonna ask about that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm really excited to read at the elementary school that I took my first art class in. Like that's mm-hmm. gonna be very oh, nice for me. Cool. That's gonna be great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have, you like, you have still some of this. Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. I was just saying, I have, like, nieces in elementary school, and I think it would be so fun to read to them, you know, just at mm-hmm. school. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. most mm-hmm. definitely. Do you, do you still have some of the same teachers that were there before when you were yeah, kids? Yeah, some of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some of them are still still there, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that's, that's awesome. going to be fun. Mm-hmm. It's just crazy because, yeah. like, the last time I was in there, I was so small, and everybody yeah. that mm-hmm. came to read in my classroom was like a celebrity. Mm-hmm. And it's mm-hmm. insane to think that now I'm going to do that. And mm-hmm. ah, look, yeah. little Trinity's dreams came true. <laughs> You're the celebrity now. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that's one of the best things. It's, it's also a way of giving back, but it's also kind of like, hey, I, I did it. I kind of made it. Your teaching helped. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That's super cool. Do you have any uh, any other tips for aspiring writers who want to create their own books? You know, we are. You no, know, she she's written some stuff. I'm 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 the aspiring writer here. But. We haven't like published a, an official like novel or anything. Yeah, yet. yeah. Hope but. soon, soon. But you have any tips for for us or anyone in the musty 
uh, collective? Yeah, definitely to do it and like build a writing practice. I'm in a playwriting class right now at school and our we have homework to just like write every day and it, it really creates a need to write every day. Like if I <laughs> have it all day, I'm like, I need everyone to leave me alone or even not leave me alone, <laughs> but just like deal with me writing here. Um, yeah. Right. yeah, the more you do it, the more you have to do it. Um, but then also editing yeah, editing is so important. There's so many poems that are, like, my favorite now that were not good the first time. <laughs> um, and that's just just going back in a second time and, like, rereading it. And But, like, outside of that, I it's you should just do it because mm-hmm. Amazon really makes it so easy to uh, just take your manuscript and put it on there and Mm -hmm. order a bunch of copies. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. One thing that I learned throughout this process that um, I I feel like probably every creator uh, has experienced when trying to, like, sell or promote or anything um, is that you're... I was expecting to get a lot of no's when Mm -hmm. asking people, like, oh, can we do this thing or do you want to buy this book or whatever. I was expecting to get a lot of no's. What I got was a lot of yeses that were lies. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, and so I would just warn against that because it is it is really hard whenever mm. people are like, yes, I'll totally do this. Yes, you can come do this. And then they just like never answer your email again or mm. ever reach out. Yeah. Oh, wow. And uh, like my dad is a martial artist and he has a bunch of uh, uh, like martial arts classes and stuff. And he's like, yeah, when you're first starting out, all kinds of people will be like, yes, I'll show up to your class. I'm super excited about this. And then mm. just no one does. Mm. And so mm. I think that that was probably, like, emotionally the biggest toll that was taken on me was I was expecting oh, yeah. to get a lot of no's. I was really excited when I was getting yeses. Um, mm-hmm. And then I was really let down when I realized that, like, until until that actually happens and they follow through, it's hard to... It's hard to keep yourself from having hope, though. Mm. And so... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was definitely the most difficult part yeah. for me that I would say to uh, young creatives trying to get out there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Yeah, most definitely. I understand that. Like, you, when you hear the yes, it's, like, great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the follow, the follow through. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, like, so when? when? You keep waiting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. right? So when? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It's like, yeah. you know, uh, like, you know, you're saying, uh, trying to apply into like a, a, a job or something. It's like, oh, just keep applying. Just keep applying. Okay. But when? Like, I'm yeah. doing the work that you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, I totally understand that. But also, it's just so great to also uh, have someone else that's there to like, the fact that we're a two person uh, op- uh, operation here is uh, yeah. very helpful mm-hmm. in that, you know, when one of us gets down, the other one can help. Be like, mm-hmm. no, we're good. We're putting everything we have into this, and we're proud of it. Mm-hmm. That's what matters. And mm-hmm. yeah. we're also just, like, having somebody to uh, lean on that is equally as excited and mm-hmm. passionate about it is really helpful. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, most definitely. And I, I also like what, it, you know, there's uh, an article interview with, with both of you, and it mentioned uh, the idea of, like, the candidness you can have between each other of, like, you know, um, this edit is, is not – good or you can improve here or Mm -hmm. this illustration will work here you know Mm -hmm. with that you know communication your relationship obviously that that boosts the creativity and Mm -hmm. you know how did how did you get to that level of candidness because you know even even sometimes with with close friends it could still be you know you're touching that creative work it's like uh, you know that's my baby so Mm -hmm. be quiet Uh, (laughs) how how did you reach that that level of candidness between the two I don't know. I think we just both really wanted the book to, like, be the best that it could be, you know? And so we weren't taking anything personally. It was just like, no, yes, I want to hear your ideas because I want it to be the best that it can be. If this illustration Mm -hmm. doesn't work, we need to know now and not Mm -hmm. when somebody is reading the book and telling me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Good point, good point. So... That, and also just having that amount of trust is, like, super helpful. And mm-hmm. just, like, the time of, like, we've known each other for so long. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, that's probably yeah. it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's awesome. So, it, as far as the future Micah and Trinity collaborations, 
you know, what can we expect in the future? What's interesting is that, like, two days ago, there wasn't really an answer to this. We're like, we're both in school. We're busy. We're not making anything. Um, But But. we have uh, recently become pretty interested in the concept of doing a graphic novel. Um, And that is going to take a lot of time. (laughs) Yes. But... uh, I think that that's the next thing that we want to kind of explore. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, we're going to be probably like every fall season promoting this book. That's just our future Mm now is whenever (laughs) September rolls around, we've got our It Can Be Scaries out. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. But other than that, probably maybe a graphic novel. Maybe. Yeah, just okay. A different way to tell a story. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe a thicker than blood graphic novel. No, I mean the, do whatever you want to do. But <laughs> that, that, we we have a friend who was like, I loved thicker than blood. I would love to see that story fleshed out. I was like, yeah. Okay. So you're like the second yeah. person okay, to ask yeah. for it. Maybe we should consider oh, it. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. That sounds. That honestly sounds really really cool. So mm, thank you. Um, and then we always like to ask this question: uh, What story are you dying to tell? Um, that you're like, I haven't told this story yet for, for, you know, both of you can answer this question. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I, we had, um, I mean, I really like talking about interviewing my uh, five-year-old niece mm-hmm. for a review for the back of the book mm-hmm. because nice. she is so eloquent <laughs> um, mm-hmm. for a five-year-old. <laughs> And she just got right in there, and she's illiterate, so she didn't have to read any of the poems. (laughs) Uh, She's still working on that reading thing. Um, And so she was just looking at all the illustrations, and it's really fun to have her just be like, yes, I like the watercolor blobs. She's like completely deadpan. I like the watercolor (laughs) blobs. I like the colors. I don't like Bigfoot's eyes. (laughs) And it's like, <laughs> all right, that she's such a good critic, mm-hmm. um, but also shows that you don't even have to be able to read to like our book. So mm-hmm. <laughs> I just think that's, that's so cute. Like she's mm-hmm. illiterate, but she's uh, like the best. Yeah. <laughs> she's so eloquent with her words. That's yeah. that's awesome. That's so cool. And then we've got like other reviews on the back of the book that mm-hmm. uh, are from uh, some of our friends that are more. Uh, literate for sure. Um, yeah. that, I would uh, hope so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's great that mm-hmm. she's uh, now she's six, but she was five whenever it happened. And at this point, she has a uh, she's officially reviewed a book and she's <laughs> featured on one far mm-hmm. before these other people were. So True. she's ahead that's of the game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I look forward to her future podcast at, at some point, too. Oh, yeah. me, too. Mm. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah. And then, uh, Micah, how about you? Do you? Is there a story you're dying to tell? Don't you don't have to reveal. If you want to be like, keep it close to the vest, that's totally mm-hmm. cool. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I want to talk about the cover, which okay. is also kind of Trinity's story, um, but we have, we have the yeah. book. Um, Ooh. But... I had a really so we had like four uh, four options for titles the titles at the time mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so I was just like in my back in my backyard just like drawing different covers that could mm-hmm. go with the different titles and listening to uh, Tiny Star uh, by the Blasting Company and mm-hmm. um, yeah yeah I uh, ended up drawing just like this came to my mind of like the words it can be scary are just about the right length that if I arrange Mm -hmm. them in a certain way they can look like a skull Mm -hmm. and that's really fun Mm -hmm. Um, yeah and so that's that's just a fun story that I hold Mm -hmm. close to my heart because uh yeah I mean I we're just huge fans of the blasting company and so most of this was made while listening to their music um yeah Mm -hmm. and then uh uh Josh Kaufman from the Blasting Company ended up actually ordering our book, mm-hmm. and so that's oh, like nice. oh, completely that's awesome. full circle for mm-hmm. us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I'm like, did he like? He doesn't even realize that I was listening to his music when we made the cover. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, and so that's like 
such a thing we couldn't have even like dreamed to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. a really cool mm-hmm. story. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. no, that, that that's that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Oh yes, I I also love about it that like like the first and last poem kind of like ties the book together with it being mm-hmm. this girl on her walk. Um, and she like talks about the sun setting, and I just feel like the cover really ties the book together with that because she's like walking through yeah. the woods imagining monsters as the sun goes down and the book is just mm. more like walking through the woods imagining monsters yeah. as the sun goes down as the sun goes down that looks Thank very you. very beautiful yeah. Thank you. Thank you. and it's, it's hardcover so that, that's yeah. awesome that's, that's really really good went through so mm. much to get it hardcover I'm so glad that it was able to happen oh very exciting hey congratulations your second published book Thank and then you. Mike and Trin, that's uh, M I C and then and and then T R I N dot yes. weekly dot com. Mm-hmm. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. So definitely everyone go check it out. And then also check out their previous book, All There Is to Know, as well. I actually just, we just bought the paperback version on Amazon. Oh, um, thank you. So, yeah. No, no, no problem. So yeah, definitely go check out their books. And it was such a pleasure to have you on the podcast and to hear just the story and how you put the book together and. You know the background of, of the different poems. Again, I didn't want to read any of the poems from *It Can't Be Scary*, so definitely read them for yourself. There's still some ones I actually like didn't talk about that were still like some favorites of mine. But thank you so much for for being on the podcast with us. Thank you guys oh, so, thank much. You so much.